Shadow the Hedgehog. Honestly, I kind of like Shadow the Hedgehog. When it first came out, it was one of the very first mature, dark games that I played when I was a kid. So I thought I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool when I first played it. Nowadays, I don't think it's that great anymore. And even more nowadays, when a Sonic game comes out, people like to bash on it, say it's terrible, say outrageous things like Sonic is terrible, he was never any good, and that Sonic is a relic of the 90s that should have stayed there forever. But to be honest, I don't really think any Sonic game is horrible per se. Like, there are some bad Sonic games, I will say that, but I don't think any of them are on the same level as E.T. for the Atari 2600, Ride to Hell, Retribution, or Superman 64, or World of Warcraft. I haven't played them personally, but from what I've seen, Sonic 06 and Sonic Boom don't seem that bad. And for the love of God, Internet, would you please stop shitting on Sonic Adventure 2? It hasn't aged well, just like every other game ever made. But anyways, today we're going to be looking at and reviewing Shadow the Hedgehog. So one thing we gotta know before heading into this game is that this was the last game that Yuji Nako worked on before he left Sonic Team for Valhalla. And boy did it show. From what I could tell, Sonic Team wanted to appeal to Shadow's newly found popularity, which is why he was in Sonic Heroes and covers a plotline on how he survived the climax of Sonic Adventure 2. The game's plot and overall design was inspired by Constantine, Underworld, and the Terminator series, and Sonic Team wanted to make a game that was darker and more adult out of the Sonic series. So we start the game off, and I have to say this right now, the FMVs are freaking beautiful! I will watch the opening cutscene again in the game because I love how great the FMVs look. However, there's only a handful of FMV cutscenes as the rest of them are done in engine. Now, I understand this, the GameCube can only handle so much FMV, and for the most part, the in-game cutscenes don't look that bad, except for this one. So let's play the game. Oh man, check out Shadow's face. That Kubrick stare up in there. This is why we call him the Edgehog. Shadow stands in a field. He wonders who the fuck he is. We see a gun. We're gonna see even more guns soon. And then, every Sonic fan turned off their GameCubes and hooked up their Genesis because aliens. Aliens fall out of the sky and wreak havoc. Then some hentai tentacle monster tells Shadow to get the Chaos Emeralds, and he will reveal who Shadow is. Yeah, that's the story. Once again, we have to collect the Chaos Emeralds, and we're in control of Shadow. And just to remind everyone that this game is the Sonic universe, we have Sonic showing up to team up with you. Let's not. And then the game shows you Mr. Hentai, or as the game calls him, Black Doom, and you could kill the soldiers. Or you could say, fuck Sonic and the Blacks and just grab the Chaos Emerald and go on to the next level. So, one thing this game is hailed for is that depending on your choices you do in that level, you can actually go to different levels. So, theoretically, you could play this game hundreds of times and not have one playthrough be the same. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sombrero, that's fucking crazy. You mean this game has infinite replayability? Well, the answer is yes and no. See, this game only has 26 levels, which is twice as much as Sonic Heroes, and there are 10 endings to this game. Do you think to yourself, I have to play the game 10 times to get the true ending and complete the game? Get the true ending? Why, yes, of course. Complete the game? The answer is no. As a matter of fact, you have to play this game 326 times to 100% complete it. And the best part about it is that all those playthroughs you do are in fact named. Individually. Let's go through them all. Punishment. Thy name is Ruin. Prologue to World Conquest. 
This march to a darker world, the ultimate ego. Purification via rumination. Apogee of the darkness, true social destruction. Believe in yourself and Android's determination. For machine, by machine. Revenge at last, ego's awakening, destruction and scorn. The last for many purpose, the nightmare's insulation. The nightmare's sublimation, the loner's choice, the subjugation in black, replica's aggression. Machine, machine, disciple from the darkness, beloved clone. Revenge upon the doctor, the ultimate replica. Sanctions demise, along with my home, the cleansing of darkness, birth of a god. The last soldier's grim fate, isolation and solitude. Archimedes and the tortoise, where is my happiness? Seduced my taste of blood. A machine made for war, original definition. Machine paradise, last will and testament, enveloped in solitude. Parasitical savior, copy of a savior. Excess of intellect, crystallization of intellect. The ultimate confrontation, miracle of love. The world's demise, the ultimate power. Died in lovely darkness, vainglory or abandonment. Messenger of rumination, standing at the summit. I pity on Gerard when the day comes when he has to complete this game. Now, I want to talk about this game more positively than a lot of other people on YouTube usually do, but we have to acknowledge some flaws with this game. And boy oh boy, there is a reason why this game along with Sonic 06 and Boom is a punching bag. First things first, the story. Now, honestly, Shadow wanted to learn of his past in order to find out what happened to him after Adventure 2 is an interesting idea for a plot. But come on, aliens, aliens. If there's one thing that's been consistent about the Sonic series, is that there has not been aliens. Now, you could argue that Chaos was alien-like in nature, but even then, he was still from Mobius. And I'm not saying aliens are a bad thing to have in a game. For example, the Wisps from Sonic Colors. But aliens to justify Shadow's past? That's lazy. Also, Black Doom. That is one of the laziest villain names in history. That's like naming your character Dark Bad. And while admittedly he can look fairly intimidating with the CG cutscenes are used, he's ultimately the dullest Sonic villain ever made. Even Mephilus was a more interesting villain, and he was a reskin of Shadow. A reskin of the reskin. What is this, a fighting game? And the boss fights, they suck. Now this is a problem that's persisted through the entire series, even since the first games in the Genesis. The boss fights aren't that great. And with a few exceptions, the bosses in the Adventure series are some of the worst in the Sonic series. But, at least one positive I can give is Eggman's boss fight, the Egg Dealer. While it's a stupid fight, it does incorporate speed into the design of the boss. The only way you can damage is by catching up and homing attack his buttons. Huh? Get it? Pushing his buttons? Yeah. It's not a great attempt, but an attempt nonetheless. The voice acting ranges from lackluster to cheesy, a reminder of a certain internet meme involving a crockish character. However, I don't think I'll be able to find it, sadly. The only voice who does an impressive job is Mike Pollock, the current Eggman voice. While he's far better at doing a comedic style to Eggman, he does a few times sound legitimately threatening. And now- They're destroying everything! How can I take over this city and build the Eggman Empire if there is no city? I'm at my limit. I have no choice. Send in the Eggman fleet. Charge! And now let's talk about the controls. Now usually it's hard to convey how it feels to play a video game without having played it yourself, but I'm going to do my best to explain it. Now imagine you are a fridge, and you are a fridge on roller skates. Now also imagine you are a fridge on roller skates in an ice rink. You have a clear idea what it's like to control Shadow the Hedgehog. Unless you are not planning on stopping anytime soon, the controls aren't that bad per se, but because the game involves so much exploring of the levels, it really shows how not great the controls are. I'm certain if the levels were designed better to do away with the collectathon elements in them, it would have been a much better game. Now hear me out guys, what if instead of Shadow the Hedgehog we have a game that's mostly linear? and focus entirely on speed and gunplay, and bosses that are like bosses from a tile from Platinum Games. Yes, I am suggesting Platinum Games should have developed Shadow the Hedgehog as a hybrid of a high-speed platformer and a third-person shooter, so basically Vanquish with more platforming elements. It would have made more sense than what we have now, because what we have now is Banjo-Kazooie if all the levels were a straight line, and yet the collectibles are still very easy to miss because of the broad level design, and of course Banjo-Kazooie being Linkin Park the Musical. My skin! It's such a weird juxtaposition of bad level design, because the levels are so spaced out, it makes it very easy to miss the collectibles, and the game requires you to find them, yet at the same time the levels are small because of how linear the game is. 
there's one last thing to criticize about this game. It is the lost impact level. Dear God, this level. I've never even beaten this level. I only ever went to this level a handful of times in my life. And even then, I knew to fear that level. Hunt down 35 artificial chaos with Maria. I don't need to explain this. If you've played Shadow, you know how bad that level is. And if you haven't, well, I'm afraid you'll never know. And you won't ever know. Because I wish that you never experience the lost impact. Now, despite all the negatives to this game, there are some positives I do want to talk about. Start talk positively about Shadow the Edgehog, the meme lord of Sonic? Not a chance in the world. I would rather kill myself than talk positively about Shadow. Matter of fact, I'm going to stick to my guns with this one. Quite literally. Goodbye, everyone. I will remember you all fondly. <laughs> ah, ah, no, for the love of God, I want out. For the You're love good. Of God, don't do it. You're not taking my way out of this time. Yes, I am. Ah, I won't let you do it. Ah, Stop it. Stop. Ah, Starting with one of the most divisive points about this game. Now, one misconception some people have about the Sonic series is that it's all cuddling animals trying to stop a fat man from taking over the world, and that Shadow is trying way too hard to be dark and edgy. But ever since Sonic 1, there have been dark themes to the game. Sonic Adventure 2 was where the series started getting noticeably darker, so with Shadow playing up the darker themes should be really so jarring as the memes tell you. I bring this up because some people seem to have the belief that guns in Sonic should not exist. Well, those people do have a point, but are also somewhat right that a character like Shadow probably shouldn't use them. But, they're also pretty good weapons. Not gonna lie, gunplay isn't that bad. Some of the guns control pretty well, and the lock-on mechanics are honestly really good. While firearms and lasers work really well, the exception to this role is the explosives. You have this big-ass bazooka, and you can't even use it for the small targets because of how hard it is to aim. I talked about this earlier with how you can theoretically play this game and not ever have the same experience. This is partially true, as you can technically play the game however you want and play whatever five levels you want to play. It's not true infinite replayability, as there are some levels that will repeat over. But ultimately, I think the best aspect of this game is the exploratory gameplay. It's definitely far from perfect, but it's something that was missing from the adventure games. Sonic was always about high-speed platforming, but since the days on the Mega Drive, exploring the levels for hidden secrets was a part of the level design. Here in Shadow, it's incorporated into the gameplay to encourage you to find hidden things in the levels. This is something that not a lot of Sonic games do nowadays. It's mainly about the high-speed platforming, which is fun, but what about the exploratory stuff? Sometimes we need a bit of that. However, I am going to contend that Shadow does it very ham-fistedly, as it forces you to explore it well, instead of having an optional like it did in the Genesis days. So, why do I like this game? Or why did I like the game when it first came out? Well, to me, this was Sonic Heroes 2, and that is my favorite, or one of my favorite Sonic games. Personally, I think it's one of the best games on the GameCube. Plus, when I was a kid, I was bloody near obsessed with Sonic X. So, with Sonic X and Heroes... What a great view! ...and Heroes under my belt, the game came out at the perfect time for me to love it. That Shadow, who I thought was pretty cool, and all the four kids' VAs. And to a kid, a pretty cool premise. I really like this game, but I will say that it is not as good as it once was. It's not a terrible game, but it's not great. It sits on a flat line of mediocrity highlighted by cheesy voice acting and alright gunplay. So ultimately, this game is like a 5.5 out of 10. It's okay. And you know what else is okay? Me. Yeah, here we go for the hundredth time. Hand grenade pins in every line. Throwing up a let something shine. Going out of my fucking mind. 
filthy mouth, no excuse. Find new place to hang this noose. Stream me up from atop these roofs. Not a tight so I won't get loose. The truth is you can stop and stare. Let myself out, no one cares. Dug the trench out, let down there with a the shovel up out of reach somewhere. Yeah, someone pour it in, making the dirt dance floor again. Say your prayers and stomping out. When they bring that chorus in, bleed it out, dig it deeper, just to throw it away. I bleed it out, dig it deeper, just to throw it away. I bleed it out, dig it deeper, just to throw it away. Just to throw it away, just to throw it away. I bleed it out. I open up these scars. I'll make you face this. I pulled myself so far. I'll make you face this. Ah. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching my video. I appreciate it so much. Let me tell you something though. Uh, I actually was inspired to make this video by my buddy, Happy Fun Time, otherwise known as Mr. Payne Skyler. He's also making a Shadow the Hedgehog video as well, and if you click the annotation that my finger is pointing to, let's go with it. it will take you to his video. And I promise you, it will be a million times better. I'm not exaggerating. It will be. Will, will we? But, if the annotation's not there, then go to his channel and call him an idiot. Let's say I sent you here. But, if he has uploaded the video, Don't call him an idiot. And call him fat as well. Anyways, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. Bye bye.